Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 214. 214. This is pretty uh, pretty exciting. It is. I told you guys that I would come here if you made it past 213. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, yeah, we were waiting. <laughs> and it was uh, pins and needles. We were on yeah. pins and needles. Yeah. Um, yeah, episode 214. I just want to thank everybody that came out uh, to the shows in Madison and Chicago and Rosemont. Always fun. Good times. And this is um this is a really special one. This is another themed episode. A themed one. Haven't done a themed one in a I while. I told guys. you guys that if you yeah. did two hundred and thirteen episodes, <laughs> yeah. I'd come back, but it had to be themed. Yep. <laughs> so this is gonna be an exciting one. This is we're gonna we're gonna talk about drinking movies. We're gonna talk about drinking movies, mm-hmm. um, which is a subject we've never covered before. And uh, well let's introduce our guest. Yeah, who is an expert. Who is an expert. We use we always use the word veritable. Ver- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's just throw it in there. It just makes it always correct. Yes. Yeah. Veritable yeah. expert. Um, podcaster Zane not Lamprey. Venerable. Yeah. Not ve- venerable podcaster yeah. Yeah. Zane Lamprey. That's our Venereal. guest. Venereal. Venereal. <laughs> Vindictive podcaster yeah, Zane Lamprey, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so talk about, uh, tell everybody what, what your shows are, what you're doing. So currently I host a show called Showdown of the Unbeatables, um, which is on Nat Geo. Yes, you have the channel, not just the magazine. Remember what we did with those magazines when we were yeah. kids? Like, you know, like you looked it up in the back when you mm-hmm. couldn't afford to buy, like, you were old enough to buy, like, a penthouse or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You go get an Azure Geographic. Uh, now I'm on the channel. <laughs> yeah. The, ch- the channel's nothing like that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, Showdown of the Unbeatables is kind of like. Um, An oxymoron. It, it is. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I never realized that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of like uh, Mythbusters, if I had to like theme it or compare it to something. Mm-hmm. You take two amazing products and then pit them against each other, and at the end there is a loser. But they're both amazing, so there's a buildup in saying how amazing these products are. Like what kind of products? Possible. Well, we had one that sticks out. Is um, It just aired. So it's on Friday nights at 10. Yes, I'm usually in bed by then. No, I'm not. <laughs> My character, the the character of myself is out partying, but the real version is probably asleep. Um, and so it's uh, it was it was called the tracking point rifle versus an octocopter, which is basically like a hover drone. And um, the tracking point rifle is is very it's you should see if watch the episode like find the episode because it'll be on, on again. That episode will, will be on again this summer. It's a rifle, um, like a sniper rifle. Mm-hmm. It has like it's with a computer in it. And what you do is there's a little button. I know I'm using a lot of hand gestures here. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys are sitting here. So there's a button in front of the trigger, a little red button, and you look through the, the your scope and you tag it. So as soon as you get it in, you tag it. And then the computer, the lasers and everything, it it, it figures out the wind trajectory, everything. And and then you uh, – so it locks it in, and then it figures out where you should shoot. Should you shoot to the left? Should you shoot above should, You know, because of the wind, whatever? And then you hold in the trigger, and then you kind of make your way around the target, like maybe in concentric circles, until, you, until you're at the point where it says you – know, and all of a sudden, boom, it just shoots. It fires with a huge recoil. And does it fire automatically? So it fire well, your whole once you tag your target, uh-huh. then you it's, it's tagged. You can walk mm-hmm. away, or you just sit there and then you you pull the trigger uh-huh. and pull the trigger. Then you then you're gonna find your spot. You're gonna keep searching searching around for that perfect spot, and then boom, it just it's gonna fire on you. Wow! Because and it's like within a millisecond. Now I have a question. Does this gun really need you? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting is that. It, it's sort of no. It, it doesn't. Chris, it, do you have you watched the Terminator movies? Yeah. Like, why are you even this, saying that? This gun is accurate up to a thousand yards. A thousand yards. That's over half a mile. Wow. You could you could kill a person, and I don't know what happened. It's hearsay because I haven't actually read the documents. But apparently, the company has something's happened. Like maybe people have been. I, I don't. I don't really know. But it seems to me, this is me starting, starting this is complete, complete uh, fabrication of, or hearsay, but um, that the government was like, that cannot be in the hands of civilians slash crazy yeah. people. To actually, uh, the. That's my right to shoot you <laughs> from a thousand yards. <laughs> That's right. Without even getting out of my chair. <laughs> I'll um, take away my robot gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Um, 
it, the only uh, person, the way to stop a, cr- a p- bad person with a robot gun is a yeah. good person with a robot gun. <laughs> is a robot. Is a robot. Right. Um, so it, the the average person is accurate, or or, or professional mm-hmm. is accurate about like eight percent of the time at a thousand yards. Right. With this, you can be about ninety percent. Wow. Yeah. Now, what was it against? You so it was against this hover drone. Uh-huh. It's about this big. I know we're mm. on the podcast. Yeah. So it was this big. <laughs> it had a, probably about a six foot uh, wingspan, uh-huh. right? and had it had eight eight rotors around mm-hmm. it, all computer controlled. Um, Any countermeasures? <laughs> it didn't have any flares. No, <laughs> it should have. Um, I, again, I refer both of you to the Terminator movies yeah. once again. Have you guys not seen the Terminator movie? Yeah. What you're describing to me is the end of humans. <laughs> so they they hung this uh, this this ball about the size of a grapefruit underneath mm-hmm. the copter, and it had mm-hmm. to go through this 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 sort of route. Uh, predetermined route about uh, 200 yards out, mm-hmm. and the tracking point couldn't get it fast enough, so it didn't mm-hmm. actually get it. But then at the end, the the, oct- the the tracking point guys said, "Can we just shoot it? <laughs> you know, can we just shoot that the copter?" And I think the guys were like, "Yeah, this is like, I think our cost was about nine. Th- like the guys who built it, their cost was about nine thousand dollars." And the mm-hmm. tracking point guys are like, "All right," so they call their CEO. He's like, "Yeah, shoot it it's for TV. Go for it." So they shot it. They actually did did shoot it. They shot down yeah. the, uh, but they shot the servo right through the middle of the thing. Shot it, and all they did was clip the servo wire that dropped the landing gear, and and caused it to return to the point of where its GPS coordinates started. So it was out there flying around, and, and it, the guy was missing. So the so the guy was sort of dancing with it, like ah, taunting him. And then boom, landing gear, and then it automatically comes back and lands on a table two hundred yards back. So really, all the gun did was scare it. I didn't know it. Sh- it just it said, shot. "Go the fuck home." Is yeah. what it said. Uh, if you guys are in the movie business, you know it's called a flesh wound. Yes, <laughs> yes. Don't worry. So, it's just, a flesh wound. so for all of our fans listening, if you want to stop a drone, you need a robot gun. Yes. <laughs> no, Lesson I, learned. I, honestly, I think he would have done better by himself without the, without the robot uh, in this situation because it was moving so fast. Interesting. I know. Mm. I know. All right. Now let's talk about your other life about being a beer expert. Well, well, yeah. No, what's your other, don't, what's your podcast though? Talk so my podcast your... is just me talking. It's called the Zane Lamprey Show uh, <laughs> because my mom told me I wasn't good enough. She's like, "You'll never have a podcast. You'll never amount to anything." And I was like, "I will show you, and I will call it my name." You'll never be able to plug a microphone into a laptop. <laughs> yes, no way. <laughs> You'll never be able to upload that um, because we were both on this show. We should tell the story. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. that's right. That's we were right. in the middle of our Kickstarter campaign, mm-hmm. and this was set up through Sideshow Network. Yes, you're on the Sideshow Network. Mm-hmm. And we were doing three or four interviews a day. Yep. And I did not read the emails thoroughly. And I showed up to Sideshow. And I'm like, where's. You're not in the studio in Studio City. And yes, yeah, so. That was a good 25 let's, let's miles away. Let's set this up yes. geographically. <laughs> <laughs> I would say a good number of people listening have been to Los Angeles and know where the airport is. Yes. And, and the fact that the city, which you fly over, or Hollywood, you know, are, mm. are not near the airport. No. So the airport is basically where Sideshow is. Right. And then not near the airport is basically where my. Right. My show recording. Yeah. A good 25 <laughs> miles not actually, here. Actually, really close to, where, to here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay, exactly. So, I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm where did you start? Did you start from here or are you a West Side? I live in Santa Monica. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, then for you, a big deal. Yeah. So I was just. <laughs> you walked there. Yeah. yeah. I, I just went there and then, and then I called. Then Chris. I get a phone call. Like, Chris, uh, where are you guys? Yeah, where's Zane? Yeah. How <laughs> maybe if you, st- if you started yelling, like, yeah. you're actually getting mean. <laughs> And Chris goes, nobody. And I was like, oh, no. Yeah. I need the email I'm correctly. here. <laughs> I'm here, too. Where are you? Wave your hands. Yeah. I don't see you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a very big office. So, Zay, you were very, very gracious in um, yeah. allowing for my stupidity. And, and, and allowing a, um, uh, a call-in. A, a call-in. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I like to think, and this is probably completely inaccurate, I'd like to think that you guys, well, you, Chris being on my show, Graham half being on my show, <laughs> um, was the turning point of your Kickstarter campaign. It was. Yeah, it really was. You could say that. If, if, we, you, if my podcast uh, came out w- on the last day of your campaign. Well, Jimmy Pardo, Chris was on Never Not Funny, yeah. and it aired that Sunday night. So then the next episode, Jimmy Pardo was going, well, we funded it. We did yeah. it. We pushed it over the top, right? We'll take credit for that. Um, take credit. We all should. Yeah. 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 <laughs> record, friend. And you know what's interesting? And so this, I won't, I won't get on my soapbox here, but every little thing helped. Yeah. You no guys, question. you guys just made it uh, on on the last. How many days did you go for? Uh, Forty. Forty. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Mm-hmm. So I made it on the thirty eighth day. 
And on the 37th day, I was like, I'm not going to make it. Tell the number. Tell, like yeah, we, yeah. We, we would tell the, our, we kept telling ourselves and other people your story. Yeah, yeah you were our inspiration. Because really. we, we and what's kept amazing going, is when they, happen. When, what's amazing was when you're saying, oh, and this guy, da, 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 and they're like, who's Zane Lamprey? And you're like, yes, exactly. Yeah. He can right. do it. We can do it. <laughs> right. So, so I had a show called. Uh, Those weren't the exact words, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a, the, the gist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a show called Three Sheets, which, um, long story short, it, it premiered on the Mojo Channel, Mojo Network, uh, the, one of the first HD channels. Uh, they went out of business. It, it then got. They didn't make their Kickstarter. They, they should have had a Kickstarter. <laughs> it then got moved over to Fine Living Channel mm-hmm. or Fine Living Network. They went off the air. Uh, and then moved then moved on to um, to Travel Channel because scripts. Who owned food and fine living, but tra- you know what? Now I'm making it a long story. And ended up, <laughs> it ended up on Spike. And at that point, it just had it, it was like airing on Spike. It had already aired on three other networks, and so they weren't putting anything behind it. It was just kind of it just kind of died. And then um, Mark Cube, I, I had a Save Three Sheets rally, mm-hmm. and I had about 700 people in in L.A. on a Thursday, and then a Saturday, or no wait, a, on a Tuesday, and then a Thursday in New York City, I went right to New York and had a, a rally, and we couldn't measure there were too many people. We think there was between 800 and 1,000 people marching with us. Wow. It was a pup crawl. Mm-hmm. We were drinking. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and, and so we did three bars, and we, and we couldn't even fit in certain bars. We had to like fill up whole blocks, and we ended up at one last place that was like three or four stories, this big, giant Irish bar. And I'm upstairs, and I'm exhausted, and you know, everyone was taking pictures and having fun. And someone's like, Mark Cuban's downstairs. It's like no, Mark Cuban's not downstairs. He's like, yeah, yeah, he is. He is. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna come down just to pr- tell you that it's not Mark Cuban. And then it's Mark Cuban. He's like, hey, I'm Mark Cuban. Yes, Mark, I know who you are. Um, he's like, I want to buy the show. I'm like, I was not prepared for this, Mark. It's not really mine to sell. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was just kind of doing this to raise awareness. So he tried to talk to them and buy it. And he, at the end, they just wanted too much money. He didn't want to pay a lot. So um, when my my basically contract was up. A year after it aired, I could go on and do a similar show. And so I called Mark and said, hey, let's do it. Let's do Drinking Made Easy, which would be a domestic version of Three Sheets. Three Sheets was a traveling drinking show, traveled around right. the world for four seasons. And then we did Drinking Made Easy on, on, on HDNet, which then it, that aired for three years. And then he changed that into a music channel. And so Drinking Made Easy as Amazing as it did for the Still network. Still appropriate on a music channel. You'd think that it would be. I, I was really surprised when he said no. So he said, all right. He's like, if you could turn it into a drinking and into a music show. And so he sent him three examples. I'm like, we could do it on stage and do like this. We could do this, this, this. He's like, no. I'm like, okay, then but we're good. So I was then, I, I have a rum, okay? And so I was talking to my mom about this rum and whatever. And she's like, oh, you know what? You should do. And, and the rum and then the show. And, I, and, I, and she said, you should do a Kickstarter like this, like this Veronica Mars. I'm like, Mom, come on. You don't know what's going on. This is not yeah. – I'm in Hollywood. You're in Syracuse. You don't, you don't know what's going on. Just hang up on her. <laughs> and, um, and then I'm like, let me, let me just prove that she's wrong. Everyone's wrong in my life. You, you can just, <laughs> let me just prove. I go on. I'm like, holy – can I swear on this? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Veronica oh, Mars. That word. <laughs> yeah. uh, they, it was like a few days old, and they had already made like five million dollars or something like that. I'm like, I have a pretty good fan base. Obviously, we weren't on like the WB or whatever they sure. were on and stuff like that. But um, I'm like, we should do this. So we did it. We started it. I apologize to my mom. And, um, and, and Mark Cuban. And Mark Cuban. <laughs> no, no, no. Mark, no. Well, no. The people that the, said. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that guy. <laughs> and so then we tried to raise $500,000 to do six episodes, thinking that we would raise more. Um, at seven fifty, we'd do eight. And at a million, we would do 10 or 12 or whatever it was, episodes. And so, at, and so we started out raising like you know, 10000 a day. You know, 10, 20, 30, 40, and then it started to slow down. I'm like, oh my God, we are, we, this is, we're not gonna, this is, we're not gonna make it. And so I'm sure it's what you guys did. You're oh, like, God. I'm gonna go on as many podcasts as I can. I'm gonna do interviews. I'm gonna do, I did a uh, Ask Me Anything, a Reddit, you know, I did everything. Leave no every, stone, every, every interview, everything, every you social possibly, media. Yeah. Yep. Leave no stone unturned. Bothered people on my, on my social media until people finally said, like, okay, we get it. We'll fund you if you stop telling us. And, um, and then I actually, I actually broke the world record for the world's longest uh, live podcast, uh, 26 hours. Wow. Just me. So other people have done – actually, other people have done it shorter. Some people have done it longer, but this was 
just me. And I had people helping me out and stuff like that, but it was just me standing, talking for 26 hours. It was amazing. If I would have sat during that, I wouldn't have made it. So I just, I stood the whole time. And, um, and so that was towards, that was actually during that, that's when, and that was when we had three days left. Um, and we, we were at about 320 of our 500 with three days left. And you're like, if you do the math, they're like, we're not going to make, what, 70 grand a day? Like, this yeah, yeah. is just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. We, haven't, we haven't done a third of that, a quarter of that on our best day. So we did this and, and we had a lot of fun with the live podcast. And in the middle of it, it just started going up, 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 up. And we could see the number of people listening to our live podcast. It wasn't that many. It was like maybe, you know, it was like between. 500 and 1,000. It wasn't enough to really make that of a, much of a difference. It was the fact that people just waited until the last minute to do this kind right. of stuff. And so we hit it. Bert Kreischer, another podcaster, yeah, was, was there when, when it happened. He was drunk. And, um, <laughs> and we, we both were. And, uh, and it was like amazing. And I was like exhausted and emotional. And, and like in my, um, in my, where we did the podcast at that time, you couldn't see the outside. So I didn't know it was light and dark and we right. just had no idea. And it was like, and there was a bunch of people there. Um, they were there when it finally happened at the end, and it was like amazing. It's the craziest thing. And we've it told that story, crazy. and that got us through our, our craziness. So you guys were what were you? What was your goal? And what were we you were short? 135 was our goal, and four days out, we were 60 grand short. We had, yeah, yeah. We had, it's impossible. Yeah, it's literally, right. literally impossible. You might as well you might as well just give up. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean obviously you can't, and you didn't, mm-hmm. and you won't. I actually, I was like, I figured it out. I figured I'm probably going to get to like about because there's, there's a wave of people. Mm-hmm. I'll probably get to about four thirty. So I called up about five people and said, and I ha- and I, I'm like, you're on, you're literally on 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 call. When I call you, I need you to to do ten grand. And I will pay. I will pay you back the ten grand. I'm gonna have to eat ten uh, percent sure, of that because yeah. of the Kickstarter yeah, fee yeah. and the credit card, credit card fee. But I, I would pay that person back, right? Because so you I, don't want to lose that giant chunk of money. No, right. and, and I don't think that that. I mean, I don't think that's even unethical. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because the yeah. people that that bid would have got what they right, paid right, for, right. and I would have had to pay for it. Well, that's um, awesome. so. Th- so they were all on call, you know, and and I actually told one of them to pull the trigger, and he did, and it might have excited people yeah, yeah. as a boost and then he pulled it out and then um and then it, that was it and then then we you know we shot up to 591 wow and it was like it was written, nice. we got like eight what did we averaged like 80 grand the last three days it was amazing yeah. it was amazing well let's amazing. talk some movies let's talk movies yeah, we're let's gonna talk it. drinking movies <laughs> um now why don't we let you go first what's uh one of your favorite drinking movies now we have a, we have a list here but uh, you can go off book as well. Well, it's funny. So you have things like Flight and mm-hmm. Leaving Las Vegas <laughs> and Barfly that are some of the saddest. Yes. That are excellent, that are excellent <laughs> movies, but not good drinking no. movies. Drinking They're just movies. more of a bout They're drinking. not like, hey, let's watch this movie. And, yeah. and, like, <laughs> and then go to a bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what I really liked that's not on here it was... Um, so your de- let's be clear. Yeah. Your definition is movies to watch while drinking or movies about drinking? I'm just saying, if you're going to say best drinking movies, I would argue that Flight... <laughs> Flight should not be here, <laughs> and and uh, and and leaving Las Vegas. Anything where someone dies, yeah. probably not the best drinking movie, unless they die in a flight. These are way. best like um, rock bottom get you into rehab movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah those I think those would say worst. Critically or, acclaimed drinking, drinking or movies. Or they could be best if you're drinking movies. Best to make you stop drinking yes. movies. Yes, yeah. yes. But I would say like a best drinking movie is something that would make you feel like old school, fantastic. Animal House, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Sideways, good. Um, have you seen Bottle Shock? Mm-mm. What's no, Bottle Shock? Um, What's going to that? Is that it's, the documentary about uh, No, Warren? no, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a movie about... I think it was like I'm gonna. It's with Chris Pine yeah. and Alan Rickman, and it's the. Uh, oh yeah, you know we this movie has come up before. Let's let's talk about this a little bit. The story of the early days of California winemaking, uh, featuring the now infamous blind Paris wine tasting of 1976. Right, has become to know the judge. So so it's basically, but it's a narrative. Yeah 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Film. And, and um they took so the real life story is they took this. This wine from Napa mm-hmm. and snuck it into a um, a pair like a French wine competition, and it won. Oh, Either won okay. or did really yeah, yeah. well. 
And and so, you know, the French called foul, but it's like, well, how can you, you know, it's blind, so they didn't know. So they snuck it in there, and, and it did really well. And that was really when people were like, what are these guys in Napa doing? So that's... And, based, and it's, on a, and it's, based on a true story, I guess. Yeah, and it's yeah. fun. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure there's drama, you know, some stuff mm-hmm. built into it. I saw, um, I just watched uh, Pain and Gain. I know it's not a drinking movie, is but they drink in it, so we can. You would have it. to drink to watch that movie. <laughs> to, watch a, to watch a Michael Bay yeah. movie, you have to get drunk. It was, it was Michael Bay's independent feature, is what he called it. Yes, of course. Well, uh, I, I want to talk about th- that, um, like party movies. I want to talk about Animal House. Yes, because I watched this film a couple weeks ago. I think it was on cable or something like mm. that. And it's one of these movies that I still view it as a, cla- a classic comedy. And a classic drinking. Yes. Like, yeah. it, is, it is because, especially when you know the story behind it. They made that movie for like 100 or 200 grand back in whatever it was, 78. I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, and they shot it, actually, because... You was, really think that was the budget? I think it was way more than that. Uh, no, it was... It, think, might, it might be on there. Look it up. I think they had a budget for cocaine. That's a separate line <laughs> yeah, item yeah, that came yeah. from a different source. Animal House came out in 1978. Uh and their budget on it, according to oh, they say three million dollars. Okay, so I was grossly off. But, uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. But still, it was. And this says estimated. I just remember reading in uh, in both Wired and the History of Saturday Night Live. Wired, of course, focuses on John Belushi's cocaine and addiction and his death and all that stuff. About how the budget on this was really low. It might have been like a million or something like that. That could be three million. Could be in today's dollars. Or in something today's right. dollars, yeah. like that. So I think it was like a million dollars, and they shot it at the University of Oregon campus in Eugene to make it look like, even though they wanted it to look like a, a back east yeah. school, which I thought was interesting because it was. A, I just performed in Eugene, and uh, my dad taught there, and so. Uh, Animal House was also the height. It was a National Lampoon movie of that first crew of Saturday Night Live. Right. That then, you know, that was just that those early days in 75, 70, or I think 76 or whatever, Aykroyd, Belushi, um, uh, Chevy Chase and all those guys, uh, Gilda Rad and the Rain Newman. Then they started to finally break out, and this was the movie that blew, that oh. made John Belushi just explode. And, and you could see how much literally, fun they're having. Like literally, made yeah. his heart explode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and you could see how much fun they were just having on the set. I mean, you could see, it, it comes through in the film, and it just celebrates every single type of debauchery. Yeah. This entire, and Harold uh, Ramis wrote it. Yeah, John yeah. Landis directed it. It's just amazing, and it's it's, it's a ho- fun party movie. It's a it fun is. college yeah. party movie. Um, the uh, you know the band that they mm-hmm. get in there. I mean, all that stuff. I'm drawing a blank, but what's the movie with McLovin? The the kid he, they're buying oh, out. super bad. Super bad. Mm-hmm. Super bad is yeah. a very good example mm-hmm. of the, like you know everyone tries to re like would try to remake that kind of a show. But I, or that kind of a movie, but I think that Superbad did it. it they did it in a, in a different way, but what? I mean, they, 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 they did a lot of things like, you know, the underage drinking and like all these horrible things that they just made into a fun comedy. Well, if you, look, if you draw the comparisons between those two movies, there's a lot of similarities in that you've got this sort of young group of comics and writers putting this together. It, you know, Superbad... Um, all those guys hadn't like completely blown up yet. Right. So right. there was a lot of like, oh, let's just, you know, we got a little, they're giving us a little money. Let's make this awesome. Yeah, this was yeah. pre money yeah. ball. Pre, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and, and you, you know that the, that the final script doesn't match up. You can't like read it verbatim sure. with the movie. You know that it was live, right. it was ad libbed. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have those things that happen. We've talked about it on this show of when like comedy writers and and comic actors and directors when they get crazy big then they feel like they can do anything and then you kind of get like anchorman 2 can we talk about that for a second because i saw that the other day i and, and i thought were you drinking uh i was mm-hmm. and i thought let me let me extend my my experience the joy that i'm about to have and instead of getting the regular version i got the director's cut oh the which, really long one which, which was yeah if it was only 10 more minutes but that was a long 10 minutes <laughs> if you look at the 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 star power the the let's just call them assets right the mm. assets 
ev- of every like mm-hmm. not only the, the the star power that was there, but also the favors that they could you know they could have shut down Times Square. They could have anything that they wanted to do. They could do for this movie, and I I, I, I like I want to point the finger at the writing. Uh, but I just feel like it was it was too far removed from the innocence that the first one had. The, like like it was a real story. It was like, yeah, sure, he put on like the Panther cologne, but that's as far as he really went. You know what I mean? Like, and in, and then and then in Anchorman two, everything was was a farce, and it it, it just it it, 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 it had no heart. You know exactly, and that's why like. Had you done an Animal House 2 or a Super Bad 2, after all those people had become giant, it yeah. would have it lost. It wouldn't have the, resonated. It would yeah. have resonated yeah. right. and it would have lost the heart. That's what you, right. that's like, mm-hmm. like Super Bad, there's a little outlandish stuff, but you kind of go, well, that could, you know, I remember high school parties like yeah. that or an Animal House, you go, I remember. Well, another good example is the Hangover movies. Right. Right. You know, when you have the oh, first Hangover, you know, yeah. like, oh, it, it came on the scene, it blew up. Right. Zach and all None the of other those guys actors. were big names yeah, yeah. before the first And it was over. just that movie did amazing and then the sequels were like I don't do I don't know if I want to see this again. cuz cuz they come in with yeah. this attitude of we got to get crazier. Yeah, it's, it's got to like, be crazier. Well, you know, we got we got to up the stakes. No. <laughs> then then you make these guys completely unbelievable. They're like international drug murderers. That third like, one was absolutely unwatchable. It's fucking that so dumb. One. Yeah, they were it was it was it it, it it's kind of like the one hit wonder sort of a thing. But but what they they were trying to do, I think, in a lot of movies that were sent using or the Hangover series or Anchorman, is literally take the backbone, the outline from the first movie, and then match it. Just change the dialogue and the locations. Mm-hmm. You know, like like that whole scene where they have all the the different stations coming together to do like a battle mm-hmm. royale. I mean, they did that again, right? But and, and like we got the joke. And then it, and well, at least in the version I watched, it went on forever. I, I guess if I if I was a director, I would definitely in, in make the the you know with the section with Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn and all these other parts. I guess I would make that play out longer. But in the version I saw, it it felt like it was two days long. Right, and they and again, and that's such a the first one. That's a hilarious scene where they roll up on ten speed bikes. Yeah. And they start fighting each other. That was great. And then so they went, we got to do the same thing, but now we give them supernatural powers and yeah, all this. Crazy shit! It, it didn't make sense, right? And um, and even Steve Carell's character, you're just like, oh. you wonder too if it's like were they noted to death or was it? Is it did it come from? Internal? No, Who I don't knows? think it's. I don't think it's noted to death because there's Adam McKay and Will Fair are they're not taking notes from people. I don't believe at this point. Right. I think it's that like they had a hard time getting that made too. That's really simple. oh yeah. Well, that, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Too. Maybe they did yeah. take really? a lot of notes. Mm-hmm. Why? It took years because to because get that of that script. That I don't know, but there was no one wanted to make it. And uh, they finally got it off the ground. That's am- I, I, that's amazing. I know because the first one was such a huge hit. You think, oh, it's a no brainer. They should have kickstarted it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you imagine how much money they would have made if they kickstarted Anchorman Two? Because the, the, just the potential of that that movie, Anchorman, was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was an amazing movie. Mm-hmm. Broke, it's like a milestone, right? And so for them to say, we're going to do Anchorman 2, we want to do it our way, we're going to do it on Kickstarter, like I would have paid, I would have, I would have put well, money on it. Well, let's look at this now, kind of going, that's a great thing you bring up because with Veronica Mars, Zach Braff, Spike Lee. Um, Although there is a little backlash now, it's interesting. <clears throat> like there, there's some, uh, um, there's some little bit of resentment here and there. Now, I, I don't share this view because I really think, uh, but you're perpetuating, uh, but it. I'm perpetuating, <laughs> but I, I can see the other side of it. Um, uh, like with a, an example of Zach Braff, he raised millions of dollars on Kickstarter to make the movie, but then he sold it for millions of dollars too. So, you know, there are no investors, nobody to pay back. And, um, you know, all that money kind of goes to him like mm-hmm. none of the investors get any of their money back or anything but, but here minute, but here's they're the thing not investors they're that's donors. What, that's right. what i'm saying i mean it doesn't i don't look at it that way but that's what people are saying like well no but, yeah, that's but, not I fair i think it's crybaby bullshit but, who, yeah, but yeah. Who, who are the people because i can't imagine that any of the backers the are backers, crying the backers because, are exactly because, because exactly. that's it they made a choice they knew the deal yeah they knew the deal i mean what you do is you you pay a certain amount of money and you get a certain reward for the film right. now if the filmmaker ends up making money or sells it that's that's whatever, fine, man. I yeah, paid fifty yeah. bucks to get my DVD signed or whatever. Right, right. The people who complain about that are just—they just sound like Hollywood assholves. I think it very much. Like, That's not yeah, fair. It's, it's what like, do you mean it's not fair. It's like yeah, it's a lot of online I stuff, and, and it's it's the other thing too. I remember that even as much as I'm not a huge fan of Mel Gibson, but when he made 
Passion of the Christ, and he made a ton of movie off that, a ton of money off that movie. Going, oh, he should, he shouldn't keep all that money. He should give it to charity. No, he should, he should no. give it to Jesus. You he, know that he, he should. He should. He, no one funded that movie but himself. Right. He put the money up. He deserves to do whatever he wants with that the, money. The That's Kickstarter ridiculous. backlash thing. When I've heard people like, oh, it's not fair that celebrities are doing that. I'm like, first of all, you're missing the point on a lot right. of levels. These are pre-sales. The pre-sales. So the fan is getting. I, I mean, I think about. Having we've been on both sides of it, the yeah, stuff absolutely. Stuff on Kickstarter, and obviously we raised our own. I think about yeah, we we support other Kickstarter support, campaigns. Well, too. I think about I think about historically, like I wish I would have been able to give money to Basketball Diaries to say it got funded. You know what I mean? Right, like my right. favorite movies or documentaries. Right, I right. wish I could say like. You know, Veronica Mar- Like, I wish I could say, oh, man, I gave 50 bucks to the Dark Knight movies. Yeah, or- I helped get that fucking movie yeah, made. And right. Christopher Nolan is making millions of dollars. Awesome. I would be like, yeah. fuck, yeah. And the you know, other maybe thing- I don't have to fund the second one. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't have to fund the second one. But the other thing, too, though, that people totally miss, and people in Hollywood completely miss, everyone in America now knows what Kickstarter is. Right. And when you go into Kickstarter, you're probably going to donate to other projects. So Zach Braff and Veronica Mars and and Spike Lee, they're bringing all these new eyeballs to Kickstarter, yeah. which then helps the person who needs, hey, I need $2,500 to go to art school right. Right. or whatever. You're helping. I've donated to movies, comic books, and video games. And it's not just like, oh, I donated to a movie. I'll never donate to anything else. Don- uh, you know, I, know, I donated to a girl that wanted to travel around the world. She's a photographer and shoot amazing things of photography around the world. And I was like... Now, do you get like a photo book or something yeah, yeah. like that? Yeah, and I yeah. got like See, a... I, and I've, and I've, I've given money to some of those where I don't even... I haven't... I've done the one where I'll give 20 bucks and I I'm not looking for anything. Like, mm-hmm. I don't... It's just, yeah, 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 just yeah, here you go. That, that yeah. sounds cool. Go for it. Uh-huh. Now, what, now, an issue with mine is that we... So we raised the money, so we went out and shot six episodes. We shot these six half hours. Mm-hmm. Um, can I digress from movies for a second? Sure. I think we've been doing <laughs> we don't want to spend they, too much time on Kickstarter. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, so so we made six six half hour movies, and then we uh, decided to make them into hour episodes. Mm-hmm. So we increased that and stuff like that. And now, at the end of the day, we have a network that is that is actually acquiring our show, so it'll it'll get it'll Great. get on TV. We're just hoping because the the, the Kickstarter backers are going to get it on May sixth. Right. It's not going to come out on TV until October, so we're hoping these that they right. don't end up on torrent sites and stuff like that. But yeah. well, I think we should uh, take a break. We, we do have a sponsor this episode. Oh, let's let's do, that. do it. Uh, Sherry's berries. Now this is uh, delicious. And then I want to talk about they are, they are amazing. They are absolutely amazing. And uh, Mother's Day is coming up Sunday, May 11th. There's only a few days left, but uh, turns out we do have a coupon code. Um, now I don't know if they've changed it to CFN yet. They were trying to. We haven't gotten confirmation on that. <laughs> So you can either use CFN or Comedy Film. One of those will work. Now they're busy making delicious. They're busy, chocolate they're busy making now, delicious have, have chocolate. Have you guys received these? Because I've actually I have, received and these. they're unbelievable. They, they're they are, amazing. and I'm and I'm obviously not getting paid anything to say this, but they I, I had some sent to my house. Mm-hmm. Giant, amazing, fresh berries dipped yeah. in chocolate that were like I think they even came like in a, with an ice pack. Like it, they were so yeah, yeah. cold. Uh-huh. It, was, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was they're, a great gift. They're packed amazingly, and they're, there's an ice pack. And also, uh, I like to eat them. They, they, <laughs> oh, I don't know what you guys do with them, but I like to ice eat packs. Them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's you know if you get and then thirsty. I use the strawberries to keep things cold, so yeah. it's really weird. I hang the uh, ice packs from a uh, a drone and yeah. I shoot it with my robot. Gun. Oh man, I'd love to shoot an ice pack. But, uh, <laughs> so they have uh, it's chocolate, white chocolate, nuts, chocolate chips, all sorts of stuff on the berries. Now, right now, there's um, you could get uh, there's an introductory one for nineteen ninety nine. I don't believe forty percent off. What? However, I it, paid over a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> for one strawberry. Yeah. Worth it. <laughs> just pause the, pause the podcast or keep listening, but just go to, is it sherrysberries.com? Sherry's, yeah. it, it's actually, no, it's oh. berries.com. What? B-E-R-R-I-E-S. You're making it too easy. I know. That's all you have to do. Just <laughs> just berries. Make it simple. What if I want to double the order? Well, you that's a do great that. question. No, I don't think you right? can. No, you can. You, you can, can double the amount of berries. What? Because you're a listener of this podcast, you could click on the mic in the upper right hand corner and use the code Comedy Film or CFN. We're yeah. not sure which, but uh, one of those will work. And you can double your berry order for oh. only ten dollars more. <laughs> Wait a second, order. yeah, it's you're crazy. Mine. I know you're, you're gonna. F- I wouldn't do that. You Let me tell you why. Because shoot, you're gonna shoot you with a robot. Gun. You're gonna feel like you're robbing them of berries if you're paying that that small amount. 
That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And then you're like, well, yeah, but you know, I like strawberries. Ask me what, what I'm doing. I, Ask what, me what I'm doing right now. What are you doing right I'm now, Zane? Sherry's Berries. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Berries. No, you no, know, no. It automatically directed me to Berries. Yeah, oh, nice. perfect. Yeah, we're, we're, we're yeah, cool. yeah. It's a redirect. B e r r i e s dot com. What's your address? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me right now, or I'm not saying to you. And don't mute it out. Come on, people want to come here. People want to know where we are right now. Is it now? Is this technically? This is not a dungeon per se that we're in. It's a, it's a, yeah, I mean, it's a multi purpose, right? It, we have With used shackles. it for abductions yeah. and okay. stuff like that okay. and toward information gathering. What's in that drum over there? It's a, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just recreation. Those are big. That's all you need Those to are know. Big rubber Did gloves. You know the, yeah. the criminal and true detective was based on us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I would, I've, I, we're pure evil. <laughs> victims are based off of Okay. Me. You want to know what's in that drum? Berries. <laughs> okay. ah, nice. So check it out, b e r r i e s dot com, and uh, we're ready. Let's go. Here's Let's go to more movies. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, the movie Arthur. The, the, oh, obviously the new one. The, no, no, the original, <laughs> the original Dudley Moore one. Mm-hmm. Because uh, what a weird way that life sort of uh, copied art. I don't know what's that mm-hmm. actual saying, but like when he he was slurring in the movie. And then ended up getting this disease where he slurred. Yeah, it's oh, that it's <laughs> he that movie is you know the new one obviously because of his Russell Brand has him Oscar winning. You're going to say it's Oscar? No. Be. <laughs> wow. uh, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. is this thing on? Cut off his mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, obviously he, he has Arthur going kind of a different direction um, from funny. From funny. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> But this original one is – I don't know that this movie could be made today because it's so just like, yay, drinking is the best. Yeah, like, day, day drinking. Yeah, how could, how could yeah. anything go wrong if you're a rich alcoholic? Well, I, don't yeah. know, I, don't, I don't know why anything – we'll just put that over here. Is that a piano? <laughs> like, oh, just always playing the piano. The other thing is too, they were a comedy team before that movie was made. That's what was so right. amazing too because you know they had Brand? that rapport. Um, yeah, 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 Russell, 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 Russell Brandt and – uh, yeah, and the other person, and, and the other person the in the film that yeah. we forget. Yeah. Who was the girl? Who was the girl? Katy Perry. The thing. Katie, ah, yeah, they were a comedy <laughs> team. <laughs> the comedy I'm sure team. There were some of funny nights. Nice Silver <laughs> and the party girl. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you watch this movie, there's so much crazy shit in it, and it has those things too of like those jokes back in the '70s that were like fun, but today would be like really racist. Yeah. <laughs> like, super That's right. racist. That's right. <laughs> Just chauvinistic and racist. It's, oh, completely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they made a couple of those too, didn't they? Weren't there like some sequels that weren't? Nah, one. It was like didn't quite you know. hit the uh, magic of the first one. Arthur goes to Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, let's talk about Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas for okay. a, man, a moment. Now, Hunter S. Thompson, obviously, this was based on him. What I find fascinating about obviously his life and why watching that movie with uh, Johnny Depp and Benicio del Toro is. You're watching it knowing that this is based on a guy and a true story, right. and you're wondering how someone could stay alive doing what they've been doing. Right. Where they're literally in a constant state of peril. Um, yeah, a peril, <laughs> yeah, is, yes. a peril uh, of external yes. and yeah. internal peril of yeah. like, and all this crazy shit that they're putting in their body. And like, <laughs> I love there's scenes there where like Benicio del Toro is like completely uh, blase about it when they're all fucked up. He's like, "Hey man, you took too much. You took too much." <laughs> Like really? That where's the line again? <laughs> it was. It's an amazing movie just to see. Uh, just to see about drug and alcohol uh, addiction, uh, but in such a Made bizarre fun and musical. fun and like uh, and like. It- but also like the crazy like costumes, like when they change right. into like lizards and demons and stuff. There was like some money in practical effects. It's, it was a really fun. Barbiturates, hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it was just one of the those things you do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's it, on one hand you're like watching this entirely entertained. I'm like, oh my god. On the other hand, you're like, how how is he still alive while doing this at the same time? Yeah, yeah. How Hunter S. Thompson made it out of that? How he made it into the '80s yeah, is, is, is uh, remarkable. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> I would also recommend too. I, I've said this before. Where the Buffalo Roam is the Bill Murray Hunter S. Thompson yes. movie. Uh-huh. Now there are some things in there that are definitely dated. It came out mm-hmm. in 1980. Um, but it was one but of the. It did show his drinking, though, right? It did show his drinking and drug use. Uh, there is some hilarious. Peter Boyle plays the, basically the Benicio del Toro role. Mm-hmm. Um, and it obviously doesn't have the crazy psychedelic drug effects and all that right. stuff like that. <laughs> but it kind of covers 
um, several uh, it's several years of Hunter S. Thompson, mm-hmm. like his on the campaign trail book with with Nixon, and then Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. It kind of covers all of it and how insane <laughs> it was, and it definitely does a little more um, of the. Hey, isn't this hilarious? You know, because mm-hmm. we hadn't really. Uh, well, John Belushi hadn't died yet, so uh, he hadn't OD'd in a in a hotel room in L.A. Um, I mean, you could say that the Wolf of Wall Street kind of uh, glamorized barbiturates as well. Such a debate on that film of whether it glamorized or demonized all that parting. Like people are right. St- we, we've had that discussion many times on the show, and then when I finally saw it, I was like, you know what? I could see everyone's point because it literally does all of those things in different mm-hmm. parts of the movie. It glorifies I, it in one part and then uh, you know condemns it in another. I was at um, this uh, wine and spirits wholesalers convention in Las Vegas last week, and uh, I was one of the speakers. And another one of the speakers was Jordan Belfort. Wow, was, really? Was him? And um, I didn't realize. I, I knew that he was speaking. I, I, I was I was probably like, not for free. No, no, no. <laughs> no. So he. Um, yeah, he was spoke at eight in the morning, and I, I I would have woken up for it, but I didn't didn't realize he was going on that early, and um, so I missed it. And then he was there signing books, and I asked somebody who went to it, like, "What's the whole like? What was the vibe?" Because, bef- like, I mean, that movie like made him a celebrity. Now he's been doing this forever. Mm-hmm. It's like, but it but it was all sort of like his version of it, you know, even though he wrote this book, right? But like when he went up on stage. People really hadn't read the book, so he could say, "Here's what I did. I made all this money. I made these mistakes. I'm sorry." And they're like, "Oh, it's okay, whatever." And when you watch the movie, you're like, you find out what exactly he did and how many people he he hurt. Right. And and if he was writing this book at some point, even though it's it's I guess apologetic, you know, he was bragging about. It. I mean, I mean, it's, right. and, and it's, it really is great that someone just pours out the truth and just like in a, and, and just tells it the way that it is because a lot of people sort of you know I would never want to write a book a, a, a real book about my life I wouldn't want to admit just you know just feelings that I've had or things or mistakes that I've made it's like you know make that mistake I don't want to make right. it again I don't need to I don't need to brag about it or whatever um, but yeah because that when I when I had sex with Pam Anderson before no, that was a joke. Sorry. <laughs> You're like, what? Uh, but like, anyway, so it was just weird. And him walking around there at, at this convention was just like, it was. Well, a, you are a host on National Geographic. I know. So it <laughs> Rock was. Rock yeah. star. Yeah, well, you know, everyone knew me. Um, <laughs> but it was just interesting. So, like, and, and, and he was sitting there signing books, and I was like, eh, that guy's just, I don't, I don't like him. Like, I, I think the movie is great. I've already rented it on, you know, on in demand or whatever, mm-hmm. as well as seeing, seeing it at the theater. And, um, and I think it's a fantastic movie. And I think Leo is just like amazing in it, as he often is. And, but I didn't, I didn't want to meet this guy. And then I was like, you know what? I should have just gone up just to get a book. Cause now I'm intrigued. I want to read this book because I want to know what they changed. You know what I mean? Because right, right. if you, if you watch the movie Pain and Gain, which I did, and I, and I watched it, and I was like, I paused in the middle of it, and my wife we, and I, we do this all the time. We'll pause it and go. All right, and then read the book? Look it up. No, just no, <laughs> you just go and look it up, like right. Wikipedia no or other that, sources. Right. You're like, what, what, what? And then you find out, like. Just a fact check, basically. Yeah, like what they changed, and you're like, wow, I wonder if they really needed to change that. But they do. They, al- they always change it. My, one of my favorites is um, Unstoppable. With the train, Chris Pine, mm-hmm. and it's a train, and it's filled with explosives, yeah. and it's about to go into like I don't know Pittsburgh or something, and, and it's where the train makes this ninety degree angle, and if the train the train's going like sixty five, seventy five miles an hour, and if it hits this this curve, it's gonna go off the track, and the whole town will literally explode and, to, and, and just become contaminated. That's not the real story. The real story was this car, this train was going like like seven miles per hour, for like a half a mile. And the guy went up and he stopped it. <laughs> that, honest to God, look it up. That's the real story. And when you say it's based on a true story, like based on a true story, <laughs> that's all you need to say. There was a train. Yeah, there was a yes <laughs> that Ding. needed to be stopped. Star Wars, based on a true story. There was a guy named Luke. Stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Yeah. And he and he lived out in Palm Desert. He, li- <laughs> he did. He did. He did. Um, a moisture evaporizer. <laughs> Uh, you know, I want to talk about this uh, strange brew. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah! Wow, I didn't even see that on the list. It's such an amazing. It's so. It's one of those movies. Make it again. I'll go see it. Yeah. Uh, no, with the same guys. I, I don't yes, know. I don't yes. know what they're doing right now. 
Rick Moranis and Dave, 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 Stewart? Dave Thomas. Dave Thomas, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's one of those movies where you watch they it are and you go, this is so weird. Yeah, yeah it, How it did really this get is made? weird. How did they do this? Because yeah. it has like literally two different tones in the movie. Like it's, even the way it's shot. Like if you watch it, like, well, this is a comedy. Wait, now it's kind of a dark thriller and now it's even shot like a dark yeah. thriller. Right. Wait, right. wait, that's those are the guys from SCTV with the guy from uh, um, Seventh Seal. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it, it's really it's a bizarre movie, and some of it I was laughing out loud. I remember seeing it, you know, years ago when yeah. it first came out, and then I was like, "Oh, that was years uh, ago when it first came out." Yeah, how old were you? Uh, you... I was in high school, I think. When uh, I saw it. Really? What, what year? What year was it? Man, they're only bringing up. Well, you see, it's not even an IMDb. Bring up the uh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. IMDb does not go back that far. <laughs> Watch this. We to go Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. We got to go back to. Rick. What year was Strange Brew made? I'm racing you. It's Siri. Wow. Strange Brew was released August 19th, 1983. Okay. Ah, yeah. Wow. I was in high school. You were in high school? Mm hmm. It's not on his. I was 11. Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's, not Rick, it's not on Rick yeah. Moranis' IMDb page. Well, he probably removed it. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is insane. How is it not? It, it, wait, is it listed check, in there? Check, oh, check Dave Thomas's. It's The Adventures of Bob and Doug McKenzie, Strange Brew. Oh, That's okay. the mm-hmm. official. Wait a second. That, did, did they make another movie then? There was one that came out in 2000. Someone tried to do something in 2000. With them? No. I don't know what that was, but it wasn't this. Does, does it say what it made? Uh, it came out in nineteen eighty. I mean, the information is sketchy. If you, yeah, it says what it made. The budget it says was estimated four million. It doesn't say what it made at all. But it's uh, were those guys Canadian? Look, Chris. All right, I'm gonna. I wanna. I, yeah, yeah. Was, were they? Yeah, it was the most Canadian <laughs> yes. thing ever. SCTV no, but no, was. no. But it, it was. I thought it was based out of Chicago. No, 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 no. Uh, well, SCTV was well, second Tor- city, Toronto. Yeah, okay. but but SCT was th- these were all uh, it was Toronto and Chicago. So the, <laughs> Chris, the joke that you made, I'm going to read this piece of trivia off of IMDb. Okay. This is going to justify <laughs> what you just said. The name of the brewery in this film is Elsinore Brewery. Max Van Cito, uh, who played the brewmaster in this movie, was also in the film Seven Seal. And that film, uh, he and his squire were heading towards the village of Elsinore, but decided not to because the plague was there. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's perfect. That's awesome. So they were well aware of it while they were exactly. shooting. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, the crazy dueling hockey teams. And yeah. And Max Lucido could, like, crush a man's skull with his hands, even with the hockey helmets as they were fighting. It's – that movie is – and they're – it's – it's – it's – it's one of those movies when you watch it today, you go, how? like, and and when you see how the movie starts, do you yeah. remember how the movie starts? No. The movie starts with um, Bob and Doug uh, making a movie, and then the premiere, and everyone thinking right. it sucks, and them chasing them, all the audience members running out of the theater and chasing them. <laughs> they made such a shitty movie. It was that bad. Yeah. <laughs> I had someone younger than me. A girl. Um, I was like, hey, come, come watch this movie, Blazing Saddles. Mm-hmm. And I played it, and she lasted about four minutes. She just didn't, she just didn't get it. It was mm-hmm. it, For me, I was like, what? It's iconic. And then you're like, well, I did see it. Maybe not when it came out. Did I see it when it came out? When did, when did that one come out? Uh, I don't know. That Ask Siri. Ask, <laughs> I'm racing you, Graham. Yeah. <laughs> when did the movie Blazing Saddles come out? 1974. Oh. <laughs> Suck it, Siri. Suck Hold it. On. What did she say? Because she, Okay, she, but she heard me over you. Okay, so I did not see it when I was a fetus, but um, but but I remember it would, it's one of those movies that would come on once a year, like like everything right, else, like right. like uh, Wizard of Oz and and Sound of Music, whatever. And you, that one I did not see in high school. Watched this with my mom, and I was like, it was um, it was the funniest thing. And I guess now it's like it's so hokey or whatever, but it is, you know, it's classic Mel Brooks and and and, 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 and Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor was one of the writers on it too. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, that's right. Well, he was supposed to be the the black guy. Yeah, he was, uh, but he ended up. He was one of the writers. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't play in it. I forgot what the reason was. I don't know. Yeah, that was a good, that was a fantastic movie. Um, all right. Well, let's do one more, and then uh, and then wrap yeah, it up. Wrap it up. I would like to wrap it up, if I might, with the Big Lebowski. Oh, ah, yes. That's now that's a good drinking movie. Now that I wonder what that did for the the White Russian. <laughs> 
<laughs> or the rug industry. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Or bowling. <laughs> or bowling. It's my understanding you brought a gun to uh, league night. <laughs> like that, it's not that he brought a gun to the bowling alley. It's that it was league night. Yeah. Could they make a sequel to that? No, no. I don't think so. Well, you know what? Here, hey, uh, man. As a film nerd, here's one of my fantasies. Is to basically do movies that are like, where are they nows with classic film characters? Like, what, where? Yeah, that's cool. Not a that. sequel necessarily, but just like, mm-hmm. you know, where would, where would Jeff uh, Bridges, where would he be now? What is that character doing? Is he still making White Russians? He's, is he still, he's, 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 or is he exactly where you left him? It's exa- nothing has changed yeah. at all. <laughs> the same, right, same apartment. Sweater. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, now I heard they're going to do that with a new Bill and Ted movie, which I would love to see. Oh, that would be really cool. Now? Yeah, yeah, I would love to see that. That's been in development for a while. I don't know if we'll yeah, ever get they off have the ground. About it. And it's so funny. Remember when uh, <laughs> Keanu Reeves in the teleprompter at some MTV Awards a while back? They had they had him say "Whoa." He's mm-hmm. like, "I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it." <laughs> but and now in this movie, he's you know, it, it would be interesting to see if he still mm-hmm. has that that comedic innocence because mm-hmm. he's. Um, uh, maybe diva is not the right word, but I mean, he's definitely a mega star. You know what I mean? For him to go back with that other guy who I don't know his name, and 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 to play well, the other that. guy wants this movie to happen. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but that would be interesting too to go back. Uh, you know what? I, I you, think... you guys watch Star Trek? Star Trek? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm like a I'm a I'm a Trekkie. So I love Star Trek. And when I'm traveling, which is a lot. I have it on my phone, and I have like right now. I'm going through Voyager, and I've been going through for like maybe. Oh, so you watch years. all the series? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I didn't like the the one with. Um, I didn't like the, the the with Quantum Leap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I, Quantum Leap. I couldn't get into <laughs> Just it. Just calling him Quantum yeah, Leap. Yeah, <laughs> Quantum when Leap. When they had the when they had uh, lyrics to the opening of the show, I was like, I'm out. I can't. Yeah. This is weird. <laughs> um, but they got a bunch of the. I think it was through Kickstarter. They got a bunch of the. People to in the in the the I guess the show because it didn't make it to a film but like to come back and be in uh, like a movie with the budget of like eighty grand wow and I've and I've watched him and it's horrible it's <laughs> it's be, it's beyond it's like you don't know how these people were working in, in such professional capacity for so and and it wasn't the acting mm-hmm. um, but but they had. You know, they had to have known the way things were going to look. And then all, all of a sudden, you know, the technology has improved. This is 20 years, you know, 10, 20 years ago. And then they can't, they can't somehow replicate some of that stuff, you know, the, the angles. And, you know, those were like, I watched it. They were, the, the lighting and the, the, everything was just wrong. And it was just, and it, and the make, makeup was, and it just blew my mind. I, I was, hmm. it was crazy that some of these people were, Willing to go back and do that, <laughs> mm. but I think, but I think that the the conventions is a big, you know, that's a big oh huge, for them, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's yeah, part that's of it. Make a lot of money, but, but anyway, anyway, Big Lebowski, it really did a lot for the white Russian industry. Yes, <laughs> Dude. and by the way, I do agree bowling. I have that ball. I have the red, white, and blue swirly ball. Next <laughs> next time, I'll bring it. Yeah, um, that'd be cool um, to show uh, on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? It's not a movie per se, but the Zane Lamprey show that podcast. Yeah, a lot of drinking in that. <laughs> a lot of drinking in that. It's done a lot for well, uh, drinking and drinking movies. Well, and drinking movies. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's our show. Um, so why don't what? Uh, what so you... we're starting right now to re- start recording. Yeah. Yes. We're... Well, that was just a conversation. <laughs> I thought we were just talking and hanging out. <laughs> I would have. I would have improved my diction. I was not aware that I was. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, as you just mentioned it, tell everybody where they can, can they find the whole Zane Lamprey package. So, I mean, just go to zanelamprey.com. And mm-hmm. if, I just, if I said my name too fast, that's fine. Just ask Siri. She'll pretty, Here, well, hold on. Let's see. Ask, mm-hmm. if, ask her if she knows. Yeah. Watch. Who is Zane Lamprey? Okay, so I have okay. to. <laughs> you call yourself <laughs> well, you know, three yeah, different you, numbers. Okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so you can catch me on Showdown of the Unbeatables on National Geographic Channel on mm-hmm. Fridays at 10 mm-hmm. for a few more weeks. And what then, percentage are robots in that show? Uh, we have, now th- this might intrigue you. I, th- I think it will. We have the world's strongest man. His name is Brian Shaw. He's about mm-hmm. six. Seven, six, eight, four hundred and twenty pounds, monster. Mm-hmm. He won the world strongman competition with the Atlas Stones and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And he takes on a robot. Ooh, wow. What yeah. kind of robot? It's a yellow one. Yeah. 
<laughs> in an obstacle course. <laughs> oh, very and cool. It's amazing. And since it's already aired, I can tell you he won. Okay. And it was amazing. The guy's so strong. It was nice. Ridiculous. He was a robot. I don't think he. I, I don't think I can say that with my, my with my non-disclosure. He was not a robot. He's, <laughs> he's a real person. Trust me. <laughs> Just for clarification, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of robots. So that's on that geo. And then, where can people find you on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, at Zane Lamprey, Facebook Zane Lamprey, website Zane Lamprey, Zane Lamprey mm-hmm. Show. Just if you go to ZaneLamprey dot com, you get it all. Or just follow me on Twitter, whatever. I talk about stuff on there. Shazam, Shazam. And you're happened. you're basically a um, a veritable oh, yes. beer expert. I am a veritable beer, I am expert. A beer yeah. expert. Yeah. So can people email you with beer questions too? Sure, Zane Lamprey at Gmail. Nice. Beer, beer questions. Do you yeah. have you ever listened to any podcasts on the Brewing Network? Uh, constantly, I'm listening to one right now. You can't see I have an earpiece. In. <laughs> <laughs> what? They triple hopped that? That's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> so we just, we guys, just, I gotta go. We interviewed those guys for the for the podcasting documentary. We went up to Northern California. It was wow. awesome. And wow. went to their, the Brewing Network, the BN Army Studios, and then saw them go to a beer rally at Heretic Brewery. Which are they? Are they celebs? In that world, yes. Yeah, in that world, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, and the homebrew people are like hardcore fans. Like, it was amazing to watch. It was really cool. There is, a, there is such a – you don't realize that these things are out there right. until you get into them. But like the, the homebrewers or the beer aficionados, Ooh, like, man. It's, a, it's a monstrous community. Now, just before we go, I just want to ask one question. Uh, homebrew startup costs. Let's say I wanted to do yeah. make a homebrew. What would that cost me? What would that set me up? Um, man, not much. You could probably get yourself going for maybe like, uh, let's say like $130. 20 130 bucks that's it really? yeah well i mean you can get something like a mr brew or whatever that it, and, and what's great about this and it's and it's it's like it's the gateway brewer and <laughs> y- you'll use it and it and it's it, it's all sort of done for you mm-hmm. but you are the one adding the ingredients and you're watching the pressure and a lot of the things and, and and you get to make some decisions and it's great because it's like it's like the you know the imac of 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 brewing like it's it's too it's plug and play but it, it gets you familiar with the process and then you can move up to to something else. And then you know, once people, you know, what I saw something today that was really intriguing to me was that a guy was growing some barley and growing some hops. And I thought, like, I, I don't homebrew. Um, I drink too much for that. And so, so I, you know, and 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 so I love to go out and try new beers. And there's so many new beers I just don't have to to mm-hmm. homebrew. But this guy was growing barley and growing hops, and I was like, what? So this guy's literally going to make it farm to. You know, garage or apartment, whatever it is, and and make his own beer. Farm that, to dungeon. That, farm to dungeon. That's interesting. Like, I, I want to try his beer that he made from his mm-hmm. garden because right. it's it's very easy things to grow. It'd be amazing right. to do that. Nice, cool. So free. Oh, yeah. So Chris <laughs> is going to now turn the garage into a brewery. Okay, that's good. That's Great. good. Right. That's good. That's to gonna, know. Plenty of room. Uh, it smells really good, actually. All right, guys. So please so, buy some shirts. I but, need to make some room. Yeah. Can, for I, a homebrew. can I hit your weights real quick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You not, do have weights. Yeah, right. knock it out. <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to do some power reps, guys, yeah, so we got to yeah. wrap up this show. <laughs> Super set. <laughs> um, yeah, so tomorrow, guys, May 7th, uh, the Comedy Film Nerds uh, live summer movie preview at the Improv Comedy Club. With Doug Benson. With Doug Benson. Um, so check that out. And, uh, of course, if you go to theimprov.com and use coupon code CFN, you can get tickets for five bucks. What? So come on out and you guys support are, the- It's like stealing. It is. <laughs> it's it what is. we do. It is. <laughs> um, so check that out, guys. And then, of course... Um, we will be uh, shooting earbuds uh, on the, the East Coast. East Coast. Do you Why? think people at this point are still listening? Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you ever wonder like how, how when you go into this sort of part of your show? They you fucking wonder. better be. Yeah. <laughs> you guys take your earbuds out now. Why don't you? Why don't you find out? Why don't you have people that are listening now, like email you or something, and then they they get like ten percent off a t shirt or twenty twenty five percent just to see who's there. Okay. Do I dare you guys to do? <laughs> what's the code what's the code um batman comedy film <laughs> <laughs> is that is that already the code <laughs> i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it i'm doing it i'm doing it i'm doing it i'm doing it all right 10 percent off right now guys for the, for the rest of the week wow. anything in the store 10 percent off crazy I'll put it in. Com- I'm going to put it in. We're just going to call it comedy film. We'll just call it comedy film. The incorrect um, 
coupon code yeah. that Sherry's Berries gave yeah. us. Comedy <laughs> film. So anyone who uses it, we know you were listening at this point. Anyone who yeah. doesn't, we know you're liars. Yeah. <laughs> 10 percent off the store for uh, this week for this week mm-hmm. um all right guys thank you so much for tuning in uh thank you once again to our guest zane lamprey yeah, zane lamprey zane lamprey ladies and gentlemen uh my name is graham elwood and i'm chris mancini and as always remember han, han shot, shot first now i gotta put the stupid code in <laughs> <laughs> while you're making homebrew yeah <laughs>